Hello, welcome to another tonal landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Sunset Cove. It's six by eight, and I finished this uh, yesterday. I'm going to see a little thing sailing by telling you, but just apologizing because the, uh, the underpainting is, I don't know what happened to it. I did the underpainting about a month ago. I must have accidentally deleted it or something. But you, you get a good idea. I mean, you know what underpainting process looks like, and you can see the underpainting there. And I think the the really fascinating and interesting part of this painting is definitely the sky. And um, I hope you enjoy watching me put it together. It came out really nice, and yeah, maybe you'll learn something. Um, now, w one way of increasing your odds of learning something is to go ahead and join my members area, where, uh, for example, this painting, I'd have a color mixing session with all of the uh, the main colors and the theory behind what I'm doing you know uh, that's there and also uh, well, not so much in this video but um, in most of them there's a session where I'm just talking about the reference uh, the, now the reference does flash up on the members area video here so you get a good look at it and uh, I've had people ask me for those images and no, I don't mind I'll send them to you why not I know your painting ain't gonna look nothing like mine that's just I don't even know if I could do another painting uh, that would look just like mine. So, well, we, we know it'll look like one of mine, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, yeah, the sky, I think, is the... Uh, the uh, we are working the oranges off against grays, but we are taking a detour kind of into purple land, okay? And I pushed just a little bit of purple in the sky and pinks and things like that and the oranges and we work into the the full out bright yellows and <clears throat> the overall effect is really good I think now up in that upper corner you see uh, where I was brushing there I, I kind of went into a blue gray it looks like straight up blue but it's actually just a blue gray. Uh, normally I would like to darken something like that but given that our tree is sort of silhouetted against the sky. And uh, maybe that's something we'll talk about a little bit. Why Why didn't I just paint it as a silhouette? I'll tell you why. Because that doesn't look very good. It tends to look amateurish if you just have something that's completely dark against a brighter sky. And the reason is for that. Now, your photo might look like that. And the reason why your photo probably looks like that is because photos are not very... Uh, cameras are not very good at uh, handling... Um, picking up uh, a bunch of information in low light areas at the same time they're picking up information in high areas with extreme uh, amounts of brightness so it, now we aren't really either but what happens is that we can uh, move our focus uh, and attention very very quickly so quickly that most people don't even recognize how fast it's occurring they just think everything's in focus and that they see everything with a full value range but the fact of the matter is that the, the eye is constantly moving around and making lots of micro adjustments now it's incumbent on you as the painter not to take advantage of this uh, human uh, ability to make micro adjustments while scanning a scene um, you don't want them to do that. Your painting should be pre-digested. It should be pre-scanned. And ideally, it just goes in as one big thing uniformly. And then it is scanned for uh, additional information, which will be an enjoyable process. Now, one thing about looking at reality is that, yes, it's, it's enjoyable. But there is a slight amount of strain that's introduced. There is a... Uh, a lot of complexity, a lot of filtering needs to, to go on. And um, uh, most of it's happening, uh, happening automatically in the background. People, unless they're artists like myself or, or like you, uh, they're not maybe that cognizant of the process. And that's fine. They don't need to be. It's not pertinent to what they're doing with their lives. But if you're a painter, this information I'm laying on you right now is very pertinent. Very pertinent indeed. You uh, you don't want people uh, working hard to look at your uh, painting. You don't want to bring in every little detail from that photo into your painting because then they're going to be forced to scan your painting the same way they scan a photo or the same way they scan reality, which is needing to filter things out. You know, We don't want them to filter things out. We want to have everything pre-filtered so they just go, oh, what a lovely painting. And they're saying that because it's it, it is it's lovely it's relaxing it just goes right in and everything is soothing and calming, and um, 
and harmonious and that's one of the reasons why uh, I you know use the term tonalism now I don't think the CC thing is going to translate that very well but uh, things have a tonal harmony a tonal congruence everything is harmonious hey now this is a topic I cover extensively in my book landscape painting the tonalist way and um, because this is what I do. Now, you can have harmony in an Impressionist painting. You can have harmony uh, in all kinds of things, but it's integral to tonalism. The, to the, the, the tonal harmony that's moving through all the colors and the way they sort of, every color is kind of holding the hand of the next color. Uh, and the, there will be contrasts, but the contrasts are not so much striking uh, chroma contrasts or color contrasts, you can do that sometimes. I've seen it done, uh, pulled off. Um, but more often it is a value contrast, like a dark uh, tree against a brighter sky. But getting back to what I was saying earlier, you wouldn't want to make that a black tree. And I didn't do that here. I brought in some... Well, actually, it looked pretty nice at uh, the level where I was just kind of... What I did was I have this underpainting uh, tree and then I come in with the, the black... And just making sure at that point not to cover everything up with black, which is something that a lot of like painters starting out might think, oh, well, it looks dark. I'll just cover it all dark. But I left bits and then I came in with those bits and, and I filled those, uh, painted those in with a color that was less dark, but still fairly dark. And I'll be honest with you, I could have left it there. But what I chose to do was to, uh, and you'll see that in a little while here in this uh, video, I chose to bring in some elements of a little bit more lightness and and there if you go if you go too extreme if it goes too light it's going to look garish and bad you know there's a lot of ways to go wrong with painting this isn't the channel where I tell you how everything is so easy I will say this if you follow my process you will be doing better paintings right away right away and you say, well, what is that, Mike? You start off by making sure the proportions of your board are, uh, you know, matched up to the proportions of your reference image, for one, um, so that you're looking at a one-to-one. -one. And then you uh, do an underpainting, and you figure out the composition and where things need to change from where they were in the reference image. And things do need to change. You can't just copy that reference image it's going to take you a while to figure out what needs to not be copied. So that's the other part of my thing. I'm always telling you, you got to paint a lot. You got to make it so it's something you do as an expression of yourself, not something you struggle with. Okay. Now, yeah, it's very rare that I struggle while painting. Now, not every painting turns out amazing, but I'm not into that. I don't want to struggle. And because I'll tell you why, if you're struggling while you're painting, then struggle is what people are seeing. <laughs> You can't struggle and create something that is struggle-free at the same time. That's a contradiction that is just not uh, real. It's not going to happen. And so how do you get yourself to that place of uh, less struggle? Well, you get there by mm, trying and, uh, and failing quite a lot. And uh, trust me, though, if you, if you go after painting every day, some of them are just going to be abysmal. And some of them are going to be really good. And you get real excited to go, God, this is going great. And it, usually once... You've hooked into that then the whole painting is going to be great you keep that painting you throw out the bad ones or paint over the top of them depending on how you know poor you may be and maybe you can't afford a, another substrate you gotta use that that old one there are uh painters like one of my favorite all-time painters georgianus loved painting on old paintings he loved painting on his friends paintings he loved painting of the top of his paintings even ones that people thought were quite good all that had to happen for him is he saw something in it he didn't like. And that can happen. Trust me, it happens. I can't say that uh, I'm absolutely 100% thrilled with every aspect of every painting that I do. But you can rest assured that I'm mostly happy with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be showing it to you. I wouldn't be sharing it. And uh, it, what is true is that... Uh, you know, or when you're less experienced, you are uh, easier to please. <laughs> you're going to see less bad things. But 
as you gain experience, you'll start seeing the problems with your older work. And that's good because that means you don't, you're not doing that anymore. You know that's a problem. And don't get bummed out about it. Who cares? The past is dead. Now, you do have artifacts from it. You have paintings you've done. If they're extremely offensive to you, I recommend throwing them away and forgetting about them. Yeah. If you record your work as I do, uh, actually, I have a lot more recordings probably hanging around the hard drives of paintings I have discarded or uh, deleted. Uh, and one day I may go back in and say, nope, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, for the for the nonce, though, I'm pretty much an archivist as far as that goes. Now, there are times where a painting session went very badly, and I did record it, and I don't come home and save that. I just delete it, and I throw the painting away. And I don't worry about it. Don't get down on yourself. There's another thing I want to uh, impart to you. There's no room, not just in painting, but in your whole life for <clears throat> pardon me, fear or negativity. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, when you bring, oh, I'm no good. I can't do anything good. So-and-so is so much better than me. and I don't know why I even bought. You can already see that like, if it's not your thoughts, if, you, if someone else is talking to you like this, you go, wow, dude, you're, you're never going to you're never gonna make it with a, a bad attitude like that. But we'll allow it with ourselves because a lot of times we don't actually voice these sentiments. They stay inside of our head. Uh, and they're like cancer. They're really bad. Um, this is what I would say. If you have something negative to say about uh, your own work, um, you want to make a note of the thing that needs to be addressed. <clears throat> you want to work towards addressing it. Um, but give yourself a break and uh, don't be hard on yourself. Don't expect yourself to be better than you are prematurely. Now, that's like one major, major problem I see with so many people that are you know attempting to be um you know painters or uh, is that they have this idea that uh, the greatness just comes about as some sort of genetic or uh, i don't know what and a lot of this is just getting mixed up you know uh, you're an individualized expression of the cosmos all right um, you have certain properties that are unique to you and to no one else work with that and what that makes, if you, uh, it doesn't really even, even matter how smart you are, to be honest. If you work hard and um, you persevere, eventually you'll be making something that no one else can make that is really cool. I promise you that this is true. This is the absolute fact. Now, I can't promise you that everyone's going to love it. That isn't the way things work. Not everyone loves my work. And I'm okay with that. I, you know, I was a commercial artist and I know how to, to work in a way uh, for the marketplace where more people would like the things I do. But honestly, that's not where I'm coming from now. I, I, work, I work very hard on getting better at what I do in the way I do it. And I'm constantly following uh, the inspirations that present themselves and the ideas that are propelling me forward in my creative endeavor and my creative process, that's all positive. It's not negative. Uh, where things could be improved, I make a mental note. Oh, maybe I can... Uh, one of the things I'm always talking about, and I'm pretty happy with the way I pulled it off in this one, you know those little skinny clouds at the bottom of the sky? Those are tough to paint, especially small. You'll hear me in the members area time and time again saying, okay, here we go, you know? I always manage to pull off something that's acceptable, but is it is it as amazing as what I would l have liked it to be? Probably not. But you know, who cares? That, that it's another painting, and if it's um, if it's done with the right intention, and you've got a certain amount of paintings on your belt, you're probably creating something that someone's going to regard as beautiful. And they'll want it and they'll want to live with it. And never, ever, by the way, getting back in this negative, never talk to someone who's regarding your work and saying, well, that's a nice painting. Don't say, yeah, except for how I painted those hills or except for how I painted that cloud or except for how I painted that ocean or except for how I painted that tree. You know, you think that you're being um, humble. And sure, yeah, that's humble. But it's not, it's not good. First of all, that person... It's going to go, oh, I didn't see that. I, I really don't like it as well now. What do you want that for? They don't need to see the things that you're seeing. That's not what I'm saying. You need to see the things 
that you see. You need to fix those things. You need to be striving for excellence. And uh, hopefully you got some good advice towards that end in this video. Until they come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Nothing's more important than family. Stay out of trouble and fight the power.